Hello students, uh, this is the fourth unit and we are going to talk about diffusion process and adoption process. I hope you will be able to understand uh, how people are getting to know about new products and also you will be able to understand whether people really accept the new products and uh, even if they are going to accept and what are the ways that they accept and how long it takes a customer uh, to make a decision on new products and how long they take to uh, buy that product that is what we are going to see today and this what called this topic is called as diffusion and adoption of innovations uh, let's talk about diffusion first and the basic understanding for diffusion and adoption process the diffusion process is the macro level process because it is going to talk about uh, new products that have been manufactured in the company and how it's going to get reached to the public but if in case we see adoption process it is a micro level process that means the product is already there in the shop and uh, now the customer is going to uh, get it or uh, he may not get it and what are the stages that is encountered by him when it is there in the shop floor but the first process is not on the shop floor it is from the transfer of uh, the goods from industry to the a retail shop and getting into the minds that is called as your diffusion process so if you come to diffusion process there are four basic elements one is called as innovation second one is channel of communication third one is social system and time and each and everything uh, is going to give you an idea about uh, what is innovation uh, how channels of communication play a major role and the social system that is around us makes us to make a decision on new product development and how long do we really take in order to buy a product so that is what we are going to discuss here let's talk about innovation first innovation is defined in different different ways and then it do not have a real definition uh, like it is not having any very consistent definition but there are four definition categories uh, four definition categories for innovation one is called as firm wanted definitions if a company perceives or if the company feels it is a new product for them for example if apple is going to release another imac and that is actually called as a new product for them if synthol is going to synthol is a brand okay if they are going to have another synthol which is synthol duo or synthol uh, new or something okay that is their firm's new product so they can call it as innovation so it is the firm that decides on the innovation part if they feel that it is a new product in their organization and that can be called as innovation to them next is called as product oriented definition there are three types in it one is discontinuous innovation which is a completely new product which is not there available in the world you can say when ipod was introduced by steve jobs that is actually called as a discontinuous innovation if you are going to say that yes probably you will have to look into the mp3 players of sony because they came into the world first as mp3 players but what stage of did is that he has just changed the innovation okay it is actually called as pioneer it is not actually called as innovation so innovation are like your first mobile phone like your Motorola Dynatech which was brought by Motorola it is called as discontinuous innovation that is completely new to the world and you look to that Alexander Graham Bell brought out telephones that is actually called as your innovation so that is discontinuation innovation one is that you do not have a relationship with other products and if I am going to just improve the product which is already existing in the world and if I am going to see that one that is actually called as dynamically continuous innovation that is a small improvement is being done on the product okay so it is like your modification of an existing product and your continuous innovation is about it is not introducing any new product and it is not actually it is actually involves the introduction of modified product rather than a totally new product for example if i would have mobile phone initially i had a hard keyboard and later on we had touch screens and in the touch screens now we have different capacity 
new sensors and then you can detect it easily fingerprint technology and also you have uh, cameras and everything getting added to that particular mobile phone device and that is actually called as a continuous innovation a product which has been discontinuous in nature initially it was new and we will add few few more modifications and that is called as dynamically continuous innovation and later on you are adding more features to it that is called as continuous innovation and next is called as market oriented definition okay that means your market oriented innovation market oriented innovation says if a product which has been newly released to the market if it has been handled or if it has been bought by a small percentage of potential market that potential market means your target market if they have bought your product and that is you called that is called as a new product and if it is going to live for a shorter period of time in the market if it's been getting released now and it's going to be there for around three months okay and till that if they feel it is a new product if the customers feel that is a new product that is coming into the market if it is going to stay for a shorter period of time in the market say that it is going to capture around 10 percent of the market share or else if it is say they lived it lived for around three months and that is actually called as your new product so it is actually a bit confusing but it is uh, from the marketer's point of view if a people hold it for a, a shorter period of time or else if a small percentage of people have the product and they call it as a new product or else an innovation and next is called as consumer oriented definition and that is very very simple because if the customer really feels that it's a new product and it is a new product and there were a lot of speculations when iPhone 5 was released as well as when iPhone 5 was, was released and they told there's no difference in the product and also I don't see any difference from iPhone 4s and iPhone 5 and why should I buy the product and also they also felt the same when they released iPhone 5s because the customer feel it is not new some people felt it is a new product because fingerprint touch ID was there so some people felt it is a new product so if a customer feel it is new and it is new product so that is what you call this innovation once you have innovations and uh, it is actually have to be conveyed to the customer okay you need to convince the customer and if you see normally why we are seeing this diffusion process because people do not normally end up in buying a new product and uh, there are very very few people who will buy the new product at the first instance so in order to do in order to uh, reduce their perceived risk and also we need to reduce their uh, uh, ambiguity in purchase buying the product so we need to give the confidence we need to build the confidence among them and if you want to do that you'll have to improve the knowledge i mean improve the knowledge of the customers about the product and you need to persuade them in a different way and also you need to reduce their dissonance and also you need to make uh, feel good about the product and you'll have to do those things okay let's see how you can do that and what you can do about it so if you're going to talk on these aspects probably people will feel confident about your product and they will certainly buy your product so the product characteristics play a major role and that is going to influence the diffusion first one is called as relative advantage and what's the difference point is there or is the USP that is there in the product or is what is completely advantage from a new product that has been introduced I mean or is the product that's been already existing in the market so what do I feel it as an advantage? For example, uh, you can take, uh, we had uh, a big uh, players, I mean uh, music players initially. And it is not so comfortable to carry along with you. And even though MP3 players introduced by some other companies, okay, it was a bit large. And the capacity of that uh, MP3 players was very, very uh, less. But when Apple introduced iPod by 2001, and then people felt it is yeah it is very easy to carry and also I can use it for my uh, uh, transportation process and can hold more than more songs than any other players so yeah they felt it's really good and then they bought it so relative advantage that play a major role next is called as compatibility compatibility means compatibility in using the product for example if you have a complex thing uh, involved in using the product and people will not suddenly buy it and you can take Fevicook for that example compatibility because if you normally stick a glue if you are using a glue and uh, you have to take it in your hand and it will have uh, uh, odd feeling and then you will have to use it you will have to uh, use only your fingers and after that Fevicook felt something different that brand was introduced and uh, 
they felt okay i cannot afford my hand to get dirty and people who felt the same and, and then they bought fevicryl so because of the compatibility and you can take you can see cellophane tapes cellophane tapes initially it was not you will not be able to tear it easily and you got a compatible product it, it is easy to tear and that is called as compatibility next is called as complexity so when people get to know about new product you need to reduce the complexity they should feel that okay i think this product is really easy to use and you need to give some supporting documents like user manuals so that people can study it easily and then understand it and also they should feel i don't think uh, this product is tougher to use and then they should feel it, is, it has user friendly and there were different different mobile phones introduced in the indian market and people felt nokia is far more user friendly rather than motorola and then they felt really tough okay so that is one part next is called as trialability trialability means you need to ensure that people can have an hands on experience so work volkswagen or any other car companies or uh, take universal and also any other puvika mobile phone stores they are giving you trialability so they are giving you an hands on experience about the product so once you go and see the product directly and then you use it and you normally feel okay yeah i think this product is really good for me i can use it okay so that confidence level will build up and then it is not about product brand loyalty but the mere perceived risk whatever that they had in their mind and the distance part will get reduced and certainly they will buy the product next is called as observability and it is really easy to sell a product rather than a service so that is why we have mentioned it here here on the slide like tangible product is easy to promote and then the intangible product so you cannot really promote a service but you can easily promote a product so give them some observability part even uh, nowadays take watson i care they are providing advertisement where they show the equipments they are providing service but they are showing equipments the dresses the doctors wear and all those things so you need to ensure that you are providing observability so when you are promoting your product give them more uh, colorful information give them more informations uh, about how it will look like and what kind of things that will uh, be a part of the product and that is really going to help you in building confidence among the people and then they will love it actually they will like to buy your new product and we have a few more things to cover and then i think can chance our communication social social system and that will be covered in part number 2 so i will take a leave now so i will meet you in the part number 2 of diffusion of diffusion of innovation